Okay, welcome to the next tutorial. This time, looking for the takeoff. We've set everything up, we are ready to go, and we just need to await the takeoff clearance. Okay, takeoff clearance given. So, first officer, switch the fixed landing lights to on. Thrust levers to 40%. Allow it to stabilize. Toga. Thrust set. Eighteen knots. Check. Okay, rotate two to two and a half degrees a second for the 15 degrees and then follow the flight director. Positive rate, gear up. So LNAV's engaged through 400 feet expecting VNAV speed. There we go, N1 VNAV speed. So climb thrust VNAV speed. Just put the autopilot in and then you get command. So, start to accelerate, just call flaps 15. Once it's going through flaps 15, maneuvering speed and accelerating, call for flaps 5. Once it's through flaps 5, maneuvering speed, accelerating, call flaps 1. Through flaps 1, call for flaps up. Stuck on 20, 230 knots at the moment. Okay, flaps are up. 250 knots. And climb in. So it's climbing in LNAV, which was enunciated here. So it's going to follow the LNAV track. Climbing initially 6,000 feet. So let's say we get given climb flight level 100. So set 100. Pilot monitoring's response would be set standard. So set standard. Standard flight level 45. And pilot monitoring would say standard and then the flight level pass in. Keep the heading bug up to date. Pilot monitoring does the after takeoff scan. Are you bred? Bleeds. Check the bleeds are on. Duck pressures are good. Ah, retractable lights off. They are off anyway. Engine start switches off. Auto brakes off. Deep Dunlops to off. We're then ready for the after takeoff checklist. So call after takeoff checklist. Challenge and response read by pilot monitoring and responded by pilot flying. Okay, so cleared now flight level 240. So as the autopilot's in now, pilot flying can do this. And once you've done that, flight level 240 set. Okay, passing through flight level 100. Check pressurization. 414 is reasonable to expect, so the long needle on here is on 4, short needles on around 1, and about 400 foot rate of climb for the cabin. Altimeters, check that the altimeters coincide. Lights, all lights off. Seatbelts off. So that's it, we're airborne. I uh, just want to demonstrate a couple of other things. This will climb now to flight level 240. 
So in the cruise page, we have 370. So in order for the airplane to stay in VNAV speed all the way up to 37,000 feet, uh, we would need to keep moving the altitude on the MCP all the way up. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate if you get stopped early, let's say 150. MCP speed, alt hold, I caught that a little bit early, so we would normally have gone into alt capture first. So that's it, we're airborne. I uh, just want to demonstrate a couple of other things. This will climb now to flight level 240. So in the cruise page, we have 370. So in order for the airplane to stay in VNAV speed all the way up to 37,000 feet, uh, we would need to keep moving the altitude on the MCP all the way up. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate if you get stopped early, let's say 150. MCP speed, alt hold, I caught that a little bit early, so we would normally have gone into alt capture first. Should normally enunciate alt hold on a real aeroplane until it actually gets to maintaining that altitude. So it's dropped out now of uh, VNAV speed. So we get cleared to climb then. So if we say only got given a climb of a thousand feet, that's a lot to change to put back into VNAV. So you have the other option, you could go into vertical speed. To a thousand feet, and that will just give you a nice gentle thousand feet. Thousand feet to level off would be the call here at 1,000 feet to go. And then if you were given a climb, climb flight level 200, then you could climb at a better rate. So you could go back into VNAV, so select VNAV, and then it changes to N1 VNAV speed. So it puts on full climb thrust here, and the pitch of the airplane then controls the speed. This is auto throttle, this is lateral track, and vertical profile. So you see you've got 3,300 feet rate of climb. So just so we can do some different things, uh, we'll give ourselves climb flight level 370. So once again, pilot flying. Set that, and then your call would be flight level 370 set. Okay, so here's a point during the climb now. Well, at through 10,000 feet, I switched the center tank pumps on. We had 300 in here. So now we've got master caution fuel. Looking up at the center tank switches, we have low pressure because there's no fuel to pump. Switch the center tank fuel pumps off. Master caution light's gone out. Just track a recall. That's cleared. So here we go again. There's the chime for 900 feet. The call would have been at 36,000 feet or flight level 360, 1,000 feet to level off. And as the aeroplane reaches flight level 370 we would expect speed VNAV path that is then in the path that is programmed into the flight management computer so we'll just allow that to level off here we go 
So the call as it's a box to change from pilot monitoring, FMC speed, VNAV path, and the pilot flying would respond check. So there we go, top of climb, uh, just to show some other modes while we're up here. Uh, just uh, we have Jersey here, so just crossing the English Channel uh, towards the Brest Peninsula. So let's say air traffic control have given us a heading to fly now. So they ask us to turn right head in uh, 200 degrees. So if we just move the head into 200 degrees, the airplane still sits there, it doesn't want to change because we are in LNAV here at the moment. So press head in select, pilot monitoring calls head in select, pilot flying calls check, and the airplane then will turn off its track. So to monitor that, if you look up in here, press progress. Progress page two of four, cross track error. So this shows you the cross track error. So the distance that you are here away from your LNAV route. So if we zoom in, okay. So just nearly a mile right of track. Just want to demonstrate to you the uh, limits of this system. So, if we move now onto a head into parallel the track, so here we are parallel in the track with 3.78 miles right of track. Okay, so the net the active waypoint is Gober. So, if I ask LNAV nothing not on intercept heading okay if I turn towards the LNAV track so that my track line now intercepts The route. And now, if I press LNAV, LNAV's engaged. So that would attempt then to capture the LNAV track. I won't keep the heading bug here just to prove to you that's not me doing that turn in, it's capturing the LNAV track. Zoom out. Okay, so you can see it's turning and capturing. So I'll keep the heading bug updated. So outside three miles of the track, if you press LNAV, if it's not on an intercept heading, it gives you the scratch pad message, not on intercept heading, and it won't allow you to engage LNAV. So that we get given direct to another route. So there's basic, that's the active waypoint. If you get given direct to Cora, which is the next one. So you line select Cora, that comes into the scratch pad. Take that to the top, Cora. That then shows you, if you press plan, that shows you the next waypoint it's looking to. So it's Cora and execute. Then you see the waypoint's gone and Cora is the next active waypoint. Okay, so this time, just take ourselves east of doesn't matter which way you go and go to progress page two so once again here we are parallel in the track we are 3.5 miles to the right of track LNAV not on intercept heading okay so here we are parallel in the track once again this time we are less than three miles uh, from the intended track, LNAV, it's still parallel in it, but now LNAV engages. So within three miles, even though I'm now not on an intercept heading, the airplane takes itself to capture the LNAV track. So 
So here we are, the uh, LNAV is just about capturing the route to Koru. So we may be given a route, maybe direct Usoda. So legs page to bring up each leg. So Usoda, bring that to the top. Check that in plan. So you see the line go into Usoda. Once you know it's going to go to the right place. execute and the airplane will turn you direct to Usoda simple as that a couple of other things we can have a play with whilst we're up here uh, so at the moment the speed is being controlled by the FMC via the CDU so cruise page target speed for the cruise decimal seven six eight just very very fractionally lower than the bug speed so if we wanted to reduce to decimal seven five and then overwrite that here watch watch the speed target change execute there you go so that's the new setting you see the thrust levers automatically come back to achieve the speed Conversely, decimal seven nine five execute, and then the speed increases. So that's one way of altering the, the cruise speed. Another way uh, we can still keep in VNAV path, but just do speed intervene. So across here on the speed area, so you've got speed intervene here, and the speed window opens. And then as I change this here, you'll see this change when you're in. 0 0.01 of a Mac and just keep reducing and the speed reference changes as so so that's the other way if we want to take it from VNAV path press speed cancel alt intervene So just having a look at a few other things around on the FMC. So you can see some airports around here. So if we go in it ref, alternate destinations. So let's look to maybe go back to Bristol. E G G D. Uh, if you put these in. So this saying, to go to Bristol, to go direct from where you are now, it's 196 miles, it'll be 11.44, what the time is here, 11.18, and you'll get there with 5.2 tonnes of fuel. Okay, let's say we want to continue following the LNAV track all the way to Ibiza, so we'll put Parma, LEPA. So as you can see, so if we went direct to Parma, we get there with 3.5 tons. If we look at progress page, following our route to Parma, uh, sorry to Ibiza, you'll get there with 2.9 tons. Okay. So these all show direct to. Uh, it won't allow us to change from the missed approach yet because we don't have an arrival in. So let's just do that. So go back to Dep arrive. So we're going to do arrivals this time, arrivals into Bristol or arrivals into Ibiza, arrivals into Ibiza, and we'll select the Corda 3 Victor, ILS Zulu 06 here, and the transition via Denev. Obviously I have the approach plates to benefit, it'll all be made clear later and then execute that. So then it has <clears throat> a full arrival down to the landing of 06 at Ibiza. So 
if we go to alternate destinations we can say now for Palmer we're going direct from now and we'll arrive there with 3.5 tons if we go via the missed approach point so if we go which means the missed approach point from Ibiza then we'll get there with 2.1 tons so this is page five of six so if you come back to you can change any of these so this has changed now to the so Palmer from the missed approach point so let's say we wanted to go to Bristol direct we're getting there with five tons from the missed approach point of Ibiza it's probably not achievable so missed approach see zero somewhere further down so it gives you a much better idea of what you can expect to get there with if you're going from the missed approach point or if you have an airborne um, reason to divert you can look to go direct there and it'll show you how much so obviously from the missed approach point it's not possible to get back to Bristol get with 100 kilos here and we get to Palmer with 2.1 which it would be the more natural diversion anyway so that's just a little bit of a look around that screen uh, if you do click nearest airports it calculates it for you and it just gives you a selection and that's it I hope you've enjoyed that uh, the takeoff finally and uh, a little bit of the cruise and the next section I will show you uh, how we set up for the descent approach and landing into Ibiza. Thanks for watching.